This is a 1970s John Deere 310 front loader backhoe that's been sitting since around the turn of the century, so probably 20 some odd years. Uh, it's slated to be cut up for scrap, as with some other machines I've been working on lately, because that's really the more lucrative option these days. But I convinced the owner to sell it to me for $1,000, and we're gonna see if we can get it running and driving home to where maybe we'll do some more work to it, sell it for a profit or some other thing besides being cut up for scrap. Uh, so we'll start with just doing a walk around tour like usual and then jump right into it. This is a, a fairly large machine, weighs in around 12,000 some odd pounds. And I was reading they come with a 52 horsepower three cylinder diesel. He said this did run when it was parked and then he had pumped the tires up a couple times. It actually has new front tires. Here's the, the old ones it looks like, but he, he put the new tires on it and that's uh, parked it some short time after that. I don't know what we're gonna find out. Oh, that actually looks pretty darn clean under there. At first glance far away, this machine was looking pretty rough, but the closer I get, it's actually not in bad shape. I mean, the seat still has some foam in place. This is manual transmission and the shifters move. The steering, it's got a lot of slop in it, but it seems to be not seized up. Whatever that is seems to be working. I might add that I'm not familiar with uh, equipment that much, so this is just a guy tinkering around. It's probably the clutch, which seems to work. Brakes, I would assume, if it's anything like my Kubota. Paint in nice shape. How about the backhoe controls? Look at that. Oh, these all have boots covering them up too, which are still intact. So, because what, what's terrible is when these hydraulics, the, the pistons get rusty and seized up. Oh, the front loader hydraulics are free too. Uh, there's no way it's been sitting since 2000. Uh, I mean, well, let's uncover it. great that somebody kept this covered up because the the engines you know pretty pretty clean and decent looking it's got some hydraulic oil here here she leaks like a sieve and has a ton of different leaks all these hydraulic hoses should really be replaced before you even run a machine like this extremely dangerous if these blow up in your face they could well they could kill you actually or blind you or cut you really bad but dangerous I don't see anything in the rad we'll throw some water in that for now. This must be the fuel tank. Take a whiff. Uh, it's not bad. It's, it's nice with diesel. It doesn't get smelling terrible like uh, like gasoline. You guys probably can't see, but I got maybe an inch or two of red looking diesel down, down there. I'll put cooling water in it later. So much smaller looking now tiny little guy the exhaust stack is just open i'm glad it was covered though uh, should mean that water didn't get in there the water pumps free i'll we'll have to get socket on the crank filter down there wide open that right, came off easy we'll just bypass that in case there's critters in there sunk in the ground pretty good looks like a weights on the front so one downside of this is that it's not a four by four i mean not that it's still a very useful machine uh, here's our oil filter fuel filter oh, i like it. it's got the clear bottom on there and it's always a good idea to check for water on the bottom of these separators but that looks fine to me well the bleed poured off oh yeah up to level in there too engine oil nothing on the stick and this is probably either the hydraulics or the transmission. All right here, let's see what that one's got. Sometimes you're supposed to check these when they're running, but that's got fluid level. Somebody cut a notch in the stick too, for easy checking it. That smells like gear oil to me. I don't know, it's got oil. That's all I care about. It's a battery box. It is maybe rotted through. That's definitely the cable there.
There's the negative cable. Look how low these hoses hang to the ground. I mean, she sunk a little bit, but that's it's really low. Well, actually, I don't know which one's the negative, but I'll figure that out. There's the negative. Oh, look, hour meter. Uh, this is 5,893 hours. That's that's quite a bit for something like this. I feel like this Optum is not really charged up, but I got a jump pack if we need it. Should really take these apart and clean them, but I'll just file out the inside a little bit and then work this back and forth to break any corrosion, tighten them down, give it a go. We can't crank the engine by hand because it's got what looks like a hydraulic pump mounted on the front of the crankshaft. Look, a John Deere remanufactured pump on it. Oh, look at that. Let's probably give this thing a good look over before we do much with it. I was gonna crack the drain bolt loose, but then I seen big heaty oil drips coming off and the ground is really oil soaked. So that's probably where all that oil went. Uh, I usually always crack these just to check for water on the bottom since I've had you know experiences where you fire it up once and then it pulls that water up it ain't gonna harm anything but it does cause the engine oil to get all foamy and white and it's a mess this must be our throttle yep turtle grab it's missing it's locked up that's okay i'm assuming we got start button right here and then i still don't know what this is but i'm reading and it shows n down so neutral all the way down and that seems these are both in neutral let's give it a bump Okay, nothing. That's assuming that's the start switch. What do we got here? That's a master switch all off right there on. I'm not gonna be hard figuring out what's going on because we got plenty of access. And that switch has no wires going to it at all. How about the toggle? Toggle does have wires. We got battery plus on the main bung and then this little start wire just kind of goes into the harness. And we'll just, we'll just put some jumpers on there. I got this end at the starter. Let's give her a bump. Oh, there's a solenoid. All right, it's not locked up. Let's put some oil in it in case that's bone dry. I really need to clean up in here or get a utility truck. All right, I'm out of oil. No need to worry though, we get the private stock. Probably not gonna be enough, but I do have a few quarts in here. A couple quarts actually. Two quarts, we got nothing still. Means I gotta run out and get some oil. I went to pull out, but actually, there's some used motor oil over here, looks like. Yeah, I'll throw that in there. Let's check it out. Wait a second, that's brand new. What is this? Fully oh, this is trans fluid. All right. Well, I know they're junking all this stuff, so I'll definitely keep that. What else we got? All right, that's used motor oil. Yeah, we can use that. Antifreeze? Yeah, nothing but the best. Peak. It was a real long trip. I literally drove 20 feet to get that. A couple quarts more and we're right at the low mark. Spray a little lube in the intake for the cylinders. We have our emergency shut off too in case the injectors were stuck for some odd reason. Don't think that would be the case, but here we go. Battery's a little low. Um, let's let's give it a shot of starting fluid. This stuff's got the lube built in too. Not that you, know, you need it. She don't want to go. I'm back with a second battery, and uh, he's over here tending to his bees. They are nice and calm. It was really neat to stop and check out. I'll let him finish up before we start spraying chemicals and making noise again. But uh, it's just interesting. He didn't even smoke the hive and they're so calm. No gloves. My, my bees are uh, usually a lot more aggressive than that, but it really depends on the time of the year too. Uh, sometimes they're calm and sometimes they're not. He did find the queen though and the hive's in great condition. So he's gonna wrap her back up. <laughs> I don't see any glow plugs or grid heater on it. I'm really shocked why I'm usually 
diesels will always just start up with the starting fluke. But we'll crack one of these injector lines loose, see if we're getting any diesel flow through it. And actually, better yet, we might as well crack the inlet loose first, too. We got good flow out of the lift pump. Let's see if anything out of the line. I'd love to get a stronger crank out of this. Um, but yeah, so that could mean this is all gummed up inside. Wait a second. This looks like an identical pump that was on the low, and it does have a solenoid on it too, a different location. But I saw just the one wire. However, this one's going to ground. And when I tap it, listen to that. The solenoid's clicking. Oh, now we should have flow. Still no flow. At Starting to get a trickle out of those lines now. It's a good sign. Got all three lines of the injectors uh, loosened up. Let's see. I feel like we need to put 24 volts in this starter. I mean, that's with a jump pack on it, too, and this thing's pretty darn tough. I got a bunch of air out of all three lines up top, and now only fuel. I'm thinking it's gonna start up. I ditched the battery terminals and went direct copper to lead post. This is really terrible for these batteries, but still no luck. So now I wired it up in 24 volt, and I have a jumper cable going between the two posts. Probably should have a better connection, but let's give it a go and just see what happens. I don't advise anybody doing this. This is how you break a starter motor, but let's, let's see if we can get a better crank and maybe a fire. Sounds much better. Give her a shot of starting fluid. Well, we're getting a nice crank now, anyway. I just can't even believe these are all scrambling to get back in. A lot of them probably didn't make it quite back and had to take cover somewhere else because they cannot fly in the rain all right what's the next plan i've got the ecoflow battery bank hooked up pulling 270 watts with the die hard charger charging these batteries back up and i'm really leaning toward we just got low compression on a few cylinders or a mechanical problem in the engine but i'm going to try heating up the uh intake with this blowtorch a little bit you see that that puff back is the starting fluid uh, I'm also a little curious if any smoke starts coming out of there, indicating maybe like a nest that I don't see immediately. A little homemade grid heater. I do have a power stripper we can try too, but I figure we'll go with this first. You see the bottom of the intake too. I mean, it's all one piece, part of the head. Get the whole head nice and warm. The batteries are wired back in parallel. I'm gonna let them charge up. And I think we'll pull these injectors now. Got them all out of there. Here goes compression check. Ah, oh, horrible. It's, it's bad, guys. All right. Number one, we got good compression. Number two, just, just like nothing. And number three, even worse. All right. Well, I should have checked that earlier. Makes sense why it was just pinging a little bit with the starting fluid. It was just this cylinder hitting a touch. These other two, no compression. Maybe it's just a stuck ring or something. Shoot some uh, PB Blast, let it soak in the cylinders. We're filling with diesel. Stuck ring. I mean, he said it ran when it was parked, but it could be rusted cylinders. You can get a borescope down there too. Check the valve train. Could be a hung up valve. Let's pause here real quick, guys, and discuss something. 
Now, lately, I've been seeing a lot of comments from people asking where I get the energy and motivation to work on these old worn out machines. And well, the, the simple answer is nutrition. And that's why we're talking about today's video sponsor, Athletic Greens and their AG1 nutritional drink. It's truly the ultimate all-in-one daily health drink that covers a lot. Simply one scoop with eight ounces of water each morning and you're getting 75 essential vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and more. I used to think coffee was convenient energy and drink like several cups a day just to keep going. Not anymore. I take one scoop of this in the morning. I don't even desire coffee. And it's got uh, natural B12 in it, a bunch of other energy supporting ingredients. And something that stood out to me, it's made in New Zealand. That's quality right there. Now here's the deal guys. If you're feeling low on energy and could use a nutritional boost, then go check them out at athleticgreens.com slash no nonsense know how and get your order started. They're also currently giving the viewers of this channel a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So check them out over there and let's dive back into the video, see if this John Deere is gonna fire up or not. I'm a little disappointed I didn't check the compression sooner because going back, I mean, hearing that crank, you could kind of hear it was just a one cylinder that had compression, but I don't really work on inline threes much or diesels for that matter, but definitely should have checked that first. Wow, really clean under there. No oil at all. Looks like somebody soldered this at some point. Unbelievable. Okay, well, that's a lot of clearance. Um, holy smokes. It seems to all be working well, except for that insane amount of valve clearance. Close these down with some PB Blast and turn it over. Maybe loosen up a ring, or if the compression gets better and then gets worse again, that'll tell us it's worn out rings or cylinders. Yeah, way, way better. And then it gets worse again. So, yeah, bad piston rings or cylinder. Cover this up, go get a bore scope. Here's what we got on the bore scope. We're on cylinder number two, and I don't know if this will record right, so I'm kind of recording it with my phone too, but hopefully you guys can see that all right. Uh, pretty severe pitting on those walls. That one's pretty wiped, and then number three. Oh yeah, yeah look at that. Mm. Definitely a lot of cylinder damage that's coming down toward the, the dish of the piston. We're in the dish section of the piston right now. This is a side view inside there. But yeah, you can see all that, that heavy pitting. Well, that's why we got no compression. I got this on Amazon. It's the Ila Home. There's a few different models, but it's got the side and facing down camera. So when you see when it comes up, you got two screens on there. It's been working pretty well. Back here next day for round two on trying to get this running. And you're probably thinking, what are you doing? It obviously needs a rebuild. Uh, there's a few things we, we didn't try. Like I wanna check the valve clearance on here because these are, I showed you, they're super sloppy and these aren't hydraulic lifters. Uh, we also, I wanna try to reseat the valves by hitting them with a hammer and a couple other odds and ends. You, you know, it's just gonna be a whole lot easier getting this machine out of here if we can get the hydraulics working and the attachments up they do sell rebuild kits for these for around 400 bucks you can get the cylinder sleeves uh, rings rod bearings and do an in-frame rebuild for pretty cheap on this and then you get to find out all its other problems if you get it running good so on the valves originally when i saw that clearance i was thinking oh, this must have hydraulic lifters but it does not <laughs> we're gonna try to get those in spec it's uh, 14 000 on the in intake and um 18 thousandths on the exhaust. Before that, I wanna try hammering down on these to allow the valve to spring up and maybe break apart any carbon deposits. And we didn't do a leak down test. That's something else we might, we might do today as well. But to start, I'm gonna take my hammer and just push down and make sure, okay, it's not hitting the piston. The rod just popped out over here. There we go. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna give it a few good whacks with the brass hammer, ideally, or a block of wood. just like so now we still got the same clearance but that way if there's any you know thick carbon deposits or rust build up on the valve seat or valve face that could break it off and then i do that across each one again always make sure to push down first oh, the rod keeps popping out so push down first to make sure the piston's not sitting right there because you don't want to hammer the valve into the piston I think I better take the engine and get these last two. Let's hear what the crank sounds like now. 
The same. The valve adjustment's super easy on this. You just have a half inch uh, nut on the other side and to tighten the clearance, I just loosen that a little bit and it's just, I guess just a lock, you know, bolt, whatever, very tight. And then you can set that to the proper clearance. So I'm gonna just snug those all down. Got those all around 20 thou. Let's hear the crank now. By the way, fully charged battery. I got a spare with me too. Almost sounds a little bit better. See, we're getting good diesel flow out of those injectors for sure. Lots of, lots of smoke and it's like that one cylinder wants to fire. I don't know how well you guys will see it, but I got a compression gauge. Let's check that number one. This only goes up to 300 PSI, but let's see what we got. Oh uh, yeah, that's going up to 250. We're healthy on number one. I'm well, pretty healthy. Pop my hand off. How about number two? Yeah, we're, we're up on compression. We're up to 150 on number two. And number three, we are at about 60 PSI on number three. I'm going out on a limb here. I just poured a little bit of foam filter oil. This is super thick stuff, probably like 50 weight or 70 weight into that cylinder. Maybe it'll work its way down past the piston, seal up these rings a little bit. We'll work it in a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. So it's definitely the rings just worn out. I'm wondering if we pour a little bit of that in each of these cylinders, maybe we can get the fire up. I mean, it's like molasses. Look at that. I'll pour, oh, I don't know, two teaspoons in each cylinder. Crank it over with the injectors out and then we'll see what we got. Well, I let that soak in. I was taking a look at these injector seals and these are in pretty good shape, but this is definitely somewhere where uh, compression could escape. I'm gonna take a little bit of emery cloth and really like a wire wheel would be nice on a drill, but I'm gonna just polish these up and get those nice and shiny and then I'll coat them in oil when we put them down. That way those seal up good. And man, those bees are going crazy today. I hear lots of buzzing. They do have these seals too and I'll use foam filter oil on this to make sure it seals a little bit better. But Injectors this... are back in. We're hooked back to 12 volts instead of 24 because I don't want to blow that starter. I've got the jump pack on there too, which is at 50%. I'm feeling pretty confident. I don't know if this is like the 20th start attempt, but you saw that compression. Let's give her a crank with some starting fluid. And I'm sure some of you guys are thinking, oh, you haven't changed the, the diesel out or get some fresh diesel. Listen, if it won't start on starting fluid, it ain't gonna start on fresh diesel. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> All right, that might've been just one off, but let's, let's give her a go. It didn't sound good. We're getting somewhere though.
feel horrible about what just happened. A hydraulic hose sprayed out and it went all over the tide. Oh man, that is such a bummer. I'm gonna have to wipe that off. Okay, that was fun. Luckily the oil didn't shoot the front of the hive, just the top and the side. So they got a nice new waterproof coating on it and they'll be all right. Probably should have had him move that the other day before I started it. Where do we go from here? I have no use for a machine this large and I have no space for it. But I do want to see it go to a good home and be used. Forget if I mentioned earlier, but I paid a thousand bucks and then I did throw this on Facebook Marketplace for 1500, not running. After I couldn't get it running yesterday, I'm like, let me put a feeler out. A ton of people want to come get it for 1500. But now that it's running and I can demonstrate that it functions, it's worth more than that. However, I have a local friend who said he'll give me two grand for it, which I think is a very fair price considering all the work it needs. And since he's local, I'll be able to verify that it's not going somewhere and just going to sit there for many years. He plans to jump on it right away. Uh, maybe I'll give him a hand with the engine rebuild or at least pressure washing it. So let's get it ready for that trip over to his location. He's about 20 minutes away. I used to hand twist these out, but the guy picked, that picked up the Cat 9770, I saw him doing a good technique, he just grab it and... Yeah, pro status. Got the implements all rigged up. That way, in case it doesn't start back up, we can still get it on the rollback. Let's see if it will start though. It's been sitting for maybe 30 minutes. It might even just need a starter motor and he could probably get a lot of life out of this engine still. Or if we had a big suitcase battery, I'll have to message Optima and see if they have any larger batteries since we're kind of been doing a lot of diesel stuff lately. These certainly aren't really designed for the job, but each of those, I just tested them last night, 1100 crank, cold cranking amps each. So uh, 2000 cranking amps, and I did check all the cable connections too. I loosened these, cleaned the ground, and also cleaned up the positive on the starter, make sure we had a good connection. But you, you can hear the struggle when it's starting. Maybe that starter's just on the way out. Just notice this has got a thousand watt coolant heater on it, plug in. I don't know if that would have been of much help, but maybe for tomorrow. A few days later, and she's ready for a bath, then transport. quick spit shine that came out looking pretty good. Now we'll go over and grease all the fittings. Some of them are gonna be tight like this one. So might have to get the, some heat. Come. Uh, yeah, man. yeah, look at that. Oh, she's gonna be happy. This thing's probably got a hundred grease fittings on it. Oh yeah, I was looking at them all. But then you have the low compression, that's gonna sometimes slow the crank down too. Right. Is it there? 
Uh, you would think low compression would turn faster, it would turn faster. It's quite the opposite, actually. It doesn't act like it doesn't have the, the compression pushing the piston back down. but he's confident it should be fine. Uh-oh, now she's wanting to dig. Mm -hmm. There we go, sliding. It's got some weight on those front tires right now. Those weren't squatting at all before. Cable. <laughs> I love that this guy pushes his truck to the absolute limit. down a little bit, almost at 14 feet right now. And here we are over a month later, ready to close this video out. I did give Jake a call, ask his progress on the John Deere. I was hoping he, he had him on a job site and I could cruise over there and, and maybe get some clips of it, but he said he's still got it in the storage yard. He's done a bunch of maintenance to it, replaced uh, a whole bunch of the hydraulic hoses. He did the, all the fluids, all the filters, uh, throttle cable. He got a key switch for it, a few other odds and ends. And he said it fires up with starting fluid. He's not gonna do an engine rebuild on it anytime soon. He's in the process of trying to get a trailer large enough to be able to tow this thing out to sites. Uh, the takeaway from this video is when, you know, do a compression check first. If you've had a diesel sitting for a long time, pop those injectors out, see what you're at. If you can hold your finger over the injector hole, not good. And pouring the oil down there, I wish I would have just done that in the beginning. Would have saved a lot of time. I was out there cranking and cranking, thinking, why won't this start up on at least starting fluid? I just felt like it, it was right about to fire up, but, but wouldn't. Anyway, if I did that, let it sit overnight, it would have filled in all those those ring areas and the, the you know grooves in the cylinder and whatever. It would have started up. I guess it would have been a much shorter video. Anyway, thanks so much, guys, for tuning into this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, keeps me fueled to keep doing it. Big thank you to the guys that have bought hats and such. If you have any ideas for future merchandise or, or any other kind of thing, you know, shoot me an email, any comments, thumbs up, all that stuff helps out the channel hugely. And uh, check me out on Instagram, same handle, or, or Facebook, uh, No Nonsense Know How. And follow me on there, that helps out big time too. And yeah, thanks for all the support, thanks for watching. No Nonsense Know How, see you in the next one. Over out.